Hello and welcome to Forensic Bytes. Today we're going to be talking about Scott's reagent and the three steps for presumptively identifying cocaine. What we're going to cover is how presumptive testing for cocaine is achieved, the identity of the three common reagents in the test kit, how that test kit actually works, and why the test was modified from a simplified test. And we'll finish on where in a testing series Scott reagent is typically used. Scott reagent is designed to identify two forms of the same drug, cocaine hydrochloride and free base cocaine, also known as crack cocaine. This is achieved by taking a small amount of the suspected drug, one milligram, and placing it inside the test satchel. Next, the three glass ampules inside are broken in a set order. The test is considered positive if there is a two-phase pink over blue solution. Every step in the series is evaluated in order to identify false positives during testing. So how does the test work? Well, the test has three sequential steps. In the first step, one milligram of drug sample is added to a pink solution of cobalt thiocyanate. And what you expect to see is a blue precipitate in the solution. To explain that further, the pink solution is simply cobalt thiocyanate dissolved in water. In water, cobalt is completely hydrated, meaning that all the coordination points are taken up by molecules of water, shown here. In this state, cobalt is octahedral, which gives it a pink colour. Now, when a sample of cocaine is added to this solution, the cocaine can coordinate to the cobalt, knocking away these water molecules. Cocaine is a lot bigger than water, so less cocaine molecules can fit around the cobalt atom. So what we get is a change from octahedral here to tetrahedral over here. And this change in coordination geometry causes the colour of the metal to shift from pink to blue. The second thing that happens is that when surrounded by water molecules, the cobalt thiocyanate is very soluble in water. However, when the water is displaced by the molecules of cocaine, that solubility disappears. So the cobalt precipitates as a blue solid. That observation is our initial positive result for cocaine. Next, we'd break the second ampule. That contains nothing but hydrochloric acid. And the expected result for cocaine is that nothing happens. The point of this step is that hydrochloric acid can dissolve up or break down certain false positives that would initially give you a blue result as for cocaine. And if we take a look at cocaine coordinated to the cobalt, you can see that in order for the hydrochloric acid to break it apart, it would need to gain access to this nitrogen to cobalt bonding here. But cocaine's a relatively big molecule. These atoms shown in yellow they block the approach of the hydrochloric acid and prevent it from accessing the bonding region. So for this reason, cocaine coordinated to cobalt is stable under acidic conditions. Many of the false positives that also bind to cobalt don't bind in such a strong way. So the hydrochloric acid can break apart the binding and cause the blue precipitate to disappear. Finally, we get to the last step, where we break the final glass ampule, releasing chloroform into the mixture. Now, chloroform and water don't mix, meaning it's going to form a two-phase system, like shown over here. Chloroform's denser than water, so it's going to be in the bottom, with the water phase on the top. The positive result at this stage is you want a pink solution on top in the water and a blue solution on the bottom in the chloroform. This translates to cobalt thiocyanate surrounded by waters on top and our drug bound to the cobalt dissolved in chloroform as the bottom layer. In terms of specificity, Scott reagent is relatively accurate compared with other presumptive tests, but it needs to be administered correctly. The main way that people don't administer the test correctly is that they exceed the one milligram of sample if you add more drug than is required to the test, you can generate a false positive result. Similarly, common cutting agents such as milk powder, starch and yeast, these can cloud the results by also giving a blue colour that mimics cocaine. It's worth stating that none of these drug testing kits are confirmatory. You always need to do instrumental testing to confirm the result. Now, one thing you may be thinking is, why is the test modified? Well, this is because there's a simplified version of the test that contains just one single vial. 
and looking at it, you can see it's a pink solution, so it's nothing but cobalt thiocyanate in water. Performing the test is similar. You add your suspected drug sample to the vial, and in this case, if you see any blue colour at all, it's considered a positive result. Now, this simplified Scott test is much less specific, as it lacks the additional steps that are needed to screen out known false positive results. In terms of a drug testing regime, Scott reagent is typically an endpoint for testing. Usually, you will start with Mayer's reagent, which will give you a positive result. That doesn't tell you anything about the drug identity, only shifts you in this direction for further testing. Then you do Marquis reagent, which tells you whether or not it's an opiate or an amphetamine. With negative results there, you finally wind up with Scott's reagent here as a test for cocaine. Should you get a negative or inconclusive result here, you would usually suspend testing. So to conclude, Scott reagent is one of the more sensitive presumptive tests, provided it's performed correctly. The chemistry that underpins it is relatively straightforward. It takes advantage of colour and solubility when cocaine coordinates to cobalt thiocyanate in water. There are two kinds of test, the modified and the simplified, but the simplified test is far more prone to false positive results and is less reliable. That's all we have for today. Thanks for listening.